Hey guys, we're about a third of the way from discussing the best player of every character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. In this video, we're going to talk about the players who have distinguished themselves among the crowd for the characters such as Pichu, Marth, Lucina, Young Link, and Ganondorf. But before we start that, I'd like for you guys to check out ProGuides.com, where we have on-demand coaching through Instapro to help you get the most out of the time you're putting into Ultimate. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to Instapro, along with a plethora of exclusive content, all posted daily. Click the link in the description below to learn more about ProGuides. We also have an all-new subreddit. Check out reddit.com slash r slash ProGuides so you can collaborate with tons of esports fans looking to learn and grow together. With that out the way, we can get started talking about the best Pichu main in the world, Nietzsche. Pichu hadn't made an appearance in the Smash game since Melee before returning in Ultimate, and the return was a triumphant one. It felt like everyone had a pocket rat when the game first came out, but now as we move into Ultimate's second full year of competition, Nietzsche has made it clear that no other Pichu can stand up to his. Nietzsche's start in the Smash community came all the way back in the Brawl era, where he grew to be regarded as the best Olimar player in the world, which is backed up by his retro Brawl rank peaking at 5th in 2012, near the end of the game's life cycle. Nietzsche ended up jumping ship from Olimar during his time in Smash 4 and performed pretty solidly by only missing the PGR version 4 in the second half of 2017. Remaining a top 50 player across the entire competitive run of Smash 4 is nothing to scoff at, but it was for sure an unexpected fall from a top 10 brawl player to the 33rd best Smash 4 player of all time. But it's looking like there's a chance we might finally see his return to the top of everyone's favorite rat in Smash Ultimate. Although Nietzsche did start the third game in his Smash career for drop to the 45th best player in the world, he was a part of a Japanese explosion on the fall of 2019 PGRU, jumping to the 27th spot. The highlight of his fall campaign of Pichu and occasionally Wario was easily Nietzsche's run to 9th place at EVO, just barely missing the final day of one of the FGC's most prestigious events. He couldn't have been too upset at all of that performance, being eliminated by Samsor and Zachary, while picking up big wins over Salem and Mars. The rest of the second half of the 2019 was composed of solid placings at Umabor events on his home turf, getting 13th, 7th and 7th at Umabor SP5, 6, and 7 respectively. He failed to match his evil performance when he returned stateside, with underwhelming showings getting 65th at SmashCon, losing to Maki Baza's Palutena and Void, and then 33rd at Kongo Saga, taking some much better losses to The Buzz and Locus. So although the pieces may not look incredibly impressive separately, the sum of these parts is what allowed the best Pichu in the world to jump back into the top 30. As for potentially losing the title down the line, the player closest to his heels would be Arfang, who finished 18 spots behind him in the fall PGRU. But before major events were halted in 2020, Arfang's performances at the start of the year made the gap between the two Pokemon look even bigger. 97th at Let's Make Big Moves, losing the Swedish Peach, Sharp, and Nebraska Sonic Tony Z Tank, which was then followed by a 49th at Genesis 7, losing the Xenios Mario and Bedgar Sheik, and a 65th at Frostbite, losing a Hungry Box in Cosmos. His 9th at Glitch 8 is his one saving grace that doesn't eliminate all hope of a sick run in the future from him. After losing to DM's Pikachu and Pools, Arfang beat Gen, Tarek, Wadi, and Leon before eventually losing to another Pikachu, this time Esams. In that same time, Nietzsche did have some less than desirable runs as well, like losing to Takera and Kirihara on the road to 9th at EGS Cup 3 and Compact and Hikaru at EVO Japan. But he did a much better job at supplementing his losses, beating Ken, Sue, Komei, Cosmos, and Prodigy in the same time frame as well. So the Japanese Brawl vet looks to be keeping the best Pichu belt for the near future with how everything's looking to may end up on the other side of the Wi-Fi era, but be sure to keep your eyes out on the race between these two in the future. And that brings us to Marth and Lucina. We'll be grouping this main character and Echo together largely due to the fact that we don't see many players opting to choose Marth over his tipperless counterpart because it's generally accepted that Lucina is the better version of the character. Players like V115 from Canada and Mr. E from New York back this theory up as they started their ultimate careers focusing on Marth but have since moved their gaze over to Lucina. But if you're wholeheartedly committed to Marth because you've been loyal to the character since the Melee days or you're a huge fan of the origin name, Fuwa from Japan is on that same wavelength and is the player you should be looking into. Unfortunately, there's only a handful of VODs up from the events as Marth has only been able to crack into top 64 a few times, further proving a point about Marth's inferiority. We do have an ever-changing game with patches, so there's a chance we might see some buffs that shift players over to Marth in the future, but for now, the conversation of best Marth main in the world is kind of a mute one because it takes place in Lucina's hulking shadow. And the player doing the most in casting the shadow is our pick for the best Lucina main in the world, Proto Banham from Japan. The current 19th best player in the world entered only a few events as a cloud main during the Smash 4 era. 
And for most, doubles is an afterthought, but it appears for Proto Banham and is still sometimes doubles partner, Furoro Laki. It was their main focus of Proto Banham even opting to not enter singles at the last Umbabora Smash 4 event. But something changed with the release of Smash Ultimate, both in terms of which brackets became his main focus and how often Proto Banham will appear at Japanese events. Something just clicked with Proto Banham and Ultimate's iteration of Lucina almost immediately. After a 25th at his first larger Ultimate event at Umabora SP2, he only placed equal to or lower than that a single time across 24 events in his Ultimate career that have followed it. The story of Proto Banham becoming impossibly good seemingly out of nowhere and almost never dropping from those peaks feels almost unreal. But it's not really too uncommon of a story in the fighting game community or even in Ultimate. There's so many different ways to approach playing, practicing, and studying Ultimate, which is what makes fighting games so incredibly addicting to play and even more exciting to watch. But that's a different video for a different time. Let's give you some more specifics on a highlight of Proto's Ultimate career so far. His first season of Ultimate that culminated in him being ranked as the number 23rd best player in the world didn't see him lead the region up until the very end of CEO 2019, which was his first major US event. Some players seem to crumble under the pressure associated with traveling to distant events, such as adjusting to jet lag or worrying that they'll underperform and waste hundreds of dollars invested on travel, which causes those normal tournament nerves to skyrocket. But Proto Banham shoved all of this out of his mind and just focused on playing the same incredible style that made him one of the scariest players in one of Ultimate's strongest regions. And with that mindset, he finished 13th to cap off his season with wins over Vinny G Snake and Wadi's Rob. But what was most indicative of what came to happen in Season 2 was Proto taking MKLeo to a Game 3, last stock, last sit situation. And on the FGC's biggest stage, during only Proto Banham's second trip stateside for an Ultimate Tournament, he got 5th at EVO. With his list of wins over Luis, Plup, Hikaru, Kameme, Light, and Mr. R on this insane run, he could have taken the rest of the year off and still made it into the Fall Top 50. And yet again, the two losses he took were against Tweak and Sam Sora, who were both Game 3 last stock situations. With just one or two more neutral wins, Proto could have gotten a run back against MKLeo and pretty feasibly became an EVO champion. But although these nailbiter sets show the incredible potential Proto can do and has done in events following it, a 0-2 stomp and a 1-2 both count the same for bracket progression. 2019 had more solid showings at Umabora events, where the Lucina King grabbed wins over Ken, Raito, and Ron to bolster his resume before respectable but underwhelming for him, 25th at Congo Saga to cap off the second season campaign. And that's the story for the best Lucina main, a title that will remain of Proto Banham for the foreseeable future. Hopefully the arc of him falling just short of taking big sets is just a brief chapter in the story of one of Smash's brightest new stars, and not a specter that continues to haunt him once events start up again. The second to last character we're going to be taking a look at in this entry in the series is Youngling, with the player who single-handedly made every top player start practicing the matchup. Toast. Ohio's number one player gained the God Slayer title from an incredibly upset lad in Frostbite 2020. A handful of players picked up a singular good win at the event, but Toast cemented himself and his character as a huge threat by beating four top 50 players, Rafi X, Kameme, Light, and Samsora. And these weren't just any top 50 players, 31st, 11th, 10th, and finally beating the second best player in the world. We said earlier that Proto's EVO run would have locked him into a top 50 spot by itself, and honestly, I think this run could lock Toast in a top 30 spot all by itself. This isn't Toast's only great performance in 2020 either. A 13 at Let's Make Big Moves where he beat Void, and a 17th at Glitch 8 helped fill his resume. This altogether makes Toast one of, if not the player I think you should be keeping your eyes on in major events in the future. Whether Toast's story could become one of a player who just blew up out of nowhere, turning one breakout performance into a win after a win after a win, or it could just as easily be seen as a more grim tale of a player who was never quite able to reach the same peaks again after going on one of the most impressive runs in ultimate short history is still up in the air. We're just gonna have to wait and see with all that's going on after all. And the last character we're going to talk about in this video is Ganondorf. Despite what your experiences playing against the King of Darknesses and countless quick play matches might lead you to believe, Ganon hasn't been able to make much headway in the competitive Smash Ultimate scene. A lot of this stems from the issues that heavies have in the Smash world, which could be a whole video in itself outlining those reasons. Nairo's secondary Ganon is the one that made the most headway out of all the Ganons, but one, we're talking about the Ganon mains in the series, and two, his Ganon had a ton of suspect performances on the rare occasions it's been pulled out. But if we do have to pick someone, Rickle stands out slightly from the pack. He's been dedicated to the character since Smash 4, and he's found some wins over notable players like Ned, Rivers, and Best Ness. 
But when it comes to arguably the most important part of making a name for yourself in the Smash community, making deep runs at majors, Rickles and his other Ganon compatriots have fallen short. This isn't from a lack of trying though, as Rickles has been putting in a lot of work, but just can't seem to get the last set to make it into top 64. Getting 65th at Frostbite 2019, Gommel, Big House 9, Nightmare on Smashville, and Frostbite 2020. Rickles has to be bound to finally get that big breakthrough performance that he's been working towards through his five years of experience in playing competitive Smash. But with how many more players are well acquitted with what the game plan is to fight against Ganon, it's been a whole lot harder for Rickles than it has been for other low tier mains. And that about does it for this video. We've got Mewtwo, Roy, Krom, Game & Watch, and Meta Knight, and more coming in the next edition. So make sure to make your predictions now on which players you expect to see representing those characters. And let us know which of these players we talked about in today's video you enjoy watching the most. Lastly, if you haven't already, make sure to scroll down below to this video and subscribe to Pro Guys and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss out on any content in a competitive ultimate scene in the future.